Hey guys, it's Donna from fedupwithfatigue.com and today I'm doing something a little bit differently. Um, so I think it was about maybe six months ago, I started uh, posting these updates of new research studies that um, had been um, added to clinicaltrials.gov, which is a database. I believe it's run by the US federal government. I can't remember offhand which uh, health organization is behind it, but anyway, it's, it's sort of where uh, researchers around the world post their new projects. Um, and also it's where patients can go and look at um, opportunities to participate in clinical trials and that sort of thing. So what I've been doing, um, I think for about six to nine months now, is about every three months I uh, post an update of the newest trials. Um, I usually do fibromyalgia and Lyme disease. And um, unfortunately this time uh, for the March 2020 update, I am just looking at doing fibromyalgia only. And um, that's not because I'm overlooking Lyme disease. It uh, so happens that there literally have been absolutely no new research studies uh, posted on clinicaltrials.gov since November of last year. So we're looking at four months and there's, there's absolutely nothing, not one. Um, I've been religiously checking about every week, two weeks, and just nothing. Um, so this update, unfortunately, uh, for the Lyme people is completely 100% fibromyalgia related studies. So if you have Lyme disease um, without fibromyalgia, then you're not really going to find anything in this video that's pertinent to you, fortunately. But for the um, fibro folks, um, we have... I have a whole bunch of things. I'm not gonna talk about all of them. Let me see, I'm just scrolling through my computer screen here. So I've got, um, for the March update, it's about 17 different uh, research studies. And I'm just gonna kinda highlight like a few of them here and there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a link to the blog post in the uh, description box uh, down below. And that way you can click over and you can actually read more about the studies. You can also see the um, other studies that I, I don't talk about because I'm, I'm not gonna touch, touch on all 17 of them. Um, I'm just gonna touch on a couple of them that I think might be interesting. And um, this video just serves for those people that prefer video. And um, I wanna apologize about my hair. I, uh, this was just kind of like a, last minute thing where I thought, oh, be nice to like do a short video. And um, I didn't fix my hair, this is how I woke up. <laughs> so apologize for that. Uh, bad hair, don't care, right? <laughs> All right, so the um, couple of highlights from, these, from this latest research update. One of the things that I'm excited about is that there is a uh, university in Denmark and they are going to be doing an actual um, double-blind, placebo-controlled study on low-dose naltrexone. And uh, you guys know that I'm a huge fan of low-dose naltrexone. Um, naltrexone is a uh, drug that's been on the market since I believe the 70s, definitely the 80s, but I believe it dates back to the 70s if I'm remembering correctly. And it, at full dose of like 50 milligrams and above, it's, it's given for um, drug addiction purposes to help people get off drugs. But they found out that at very low doses, and typically uh, low doses of like one milligram to um, typical would be 4.5 milligrams, but some people also see benefits on doses up to six milligrams and 7.5 milligrams. Um, but anyway, at low doses, you know, somewhere between that one and, and 7.5, um, it's been found helpful for uh, pain relief, um, for immune system regulation. Um, a lot of people with fibromyalgia, a growing number of people with fibromyalgia are using it. Um, I take it myself for both Lyme and fibromyalgia. For um, fibromyalgia, it helps with pain. For my Lyme disease um, issues, it um, helps to boost and, and balance my uh, immune system. So it helps your immune system work a little bit better. Um, other conditions that low-dose naltrexone has been shown helpful for include 
uh, things like MS, um, Crohn's disease, I think is, a, is another one. Uh, there's just all sorts of uh, conditions that they've been starting to, to try it with. Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome is another one. Um, so pretty excited about that. It's a 12 week study like I said, in Denmark, and uh, they're going to start people, uh, I believe it, it was a 1.5 milligram dose, and they're gonna uh, titrate them up to six milligrams over the uh, 12 weeks, and then see what happens with their fibro pain. So that should be pretty interesting. And it is 100 patients, so it's a little bit larger than some of the other uh, naltrexone uh, studies that have been done in the past. Um, another one of the studies I'm kind of excited about is a study that's being conducted by uh, Dr. Jared Younger out of uh, University of Alabama, Birmingham. And um, you guys know I've written about him several times on Fed Up With Fatigue. Um, I just love his work. He's creative. He's doing work that um, other researchers, uh, fibromyalgia researchers aren't doing. And he, his focus a lot of his focus is on looking at um, the brain of fibromyalgia patients. In this particular study, he, um, his, his theory is that fibromyalgia is caused by an overreactive immune system. So uh, this new study that was on clinicaltrials.gov is like a continuance of that research uh, where he's um, continuing to try to link uh, immune system overreactivity to fibromyalgia symptoms. So that's going to be pretty interesting to see what becomes of that. Um, there is a cannabis study out of Chile, which um, is kind of interesting. They're um, going to be giving, let me see, 44 women with fibro um, a um, extract of cannabis. It's a combination of THC and CBD product and they're gonna see if that helps um, with, with pain and other symptoms, I guess. And the, um, it is a double-blind, placebo-controlled, um, so if the results work out, it should be, um, you know, pretty, add some credibility to using cannabis for fibromyalgia. We have had recently in the last, um, last few months a couple of cannabis-related article uh, research studies coming out um, and so far, the results look good, look promising. Um, of course, you're always gonna have people that say, we need more research, more research, more research. So this uh, study coming out of Chile is gonna just kinda add to um, what's already been done and hopefully all of the studies that'll be coming in the future. Um, there are actually two studies out of Israel on um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy for fibromyalgia. So I think it was back in 2015, this same group of researchers did their initial study on um, hyperbaric oxygen chambers uh, and fibromyalgia and the results were really, really good. And so uh, these two studies are just continuing um, that area of research that that particular university has um, been involved with. Let me see. Um, there's, there's a study looking at um, what they call photoregulation, which essentially is red light therapy. So I don't know if you guys have seen an example of red light therapy would be the uh, Juve product. Uh, Juve, which I think is... J U, I think it's, let me see if I can get, all right, it's um, J O O V V, uh, Juve, J O O V V, and it's a red, red light therapy device. That's an example of, of one of the devices that's currently on the market. And so essentially they're gonna be looking at red light and is that helpful for um, fibromyalgia pain and that type of thing. Uh, let's see what else we got here that's interesting. Um, there, um, there's a couple of uh, kind of diet and nutrition related uh, studies. Um, one of the ones that sounds kind of interesting is um, a research study out of Turkey where basically they're looking at the behavior, eating behaviors of women with fibromyalgia and trying to 
figure out do those behaviors have an impact on their symptoms. And if I, I don't have it in my little description here on the screen, but if I'm remembering correctly, uh, this is a, um, this is a study where they've got a group of uh, people with fibro and a group of healthy people, and then they're gonna compare the two groups. And again, it's to see if the way uh, people with fibromyalgia eat contributes to their um, health status, is how they put it in, on clinicaltrials.gov. Um, so there's a, there's a study, and originally when I saw the, the headline for it, I just kind of rolled my eyes and was like, Psh. Yeah, that's a waste of research dollars. But once once I read the description, like I sort of I uh, I can see where this study is is useful, it could be helpful in in some ways. So this is a study that's out of Spain, and basically the headline is fibromyalgia and olive oil. So yeah, you can see why I would roll my eyes on that. Um, not that I think olive oil is, I know olive oil is like, like very healthy and good for people with fibro. That's, that's not why I just, you know, you think, all right, is that a good use of research dollars? But apparently what they had, they had found is that, uh, women with fibromyalgia, um, have a certain, uh, predisposition to, um, uh, heart disease, and so they wanted to look at if um, using olive oil in someone with fibromyalgia may help with with uh, cardiovascular disease and uh, that sort of thing. So um, it actually, I mean, that could be useful. Uh, let's see. Um, there are, like usual, like every single time, we're of course going to have a um, couple of studies uh, on exercise. Um, there is a study out of Portugal that's basically looking at um, comparing a uh, eight-week exercise program plus education program to um, doing only eight-week exercise only. So uh, that's that's a study that's coming up in Portugal for 60 fibro patients. And also, you know, the research studies also tend to, we always tend to have some studies that are looking at like cognitive issues and um, mindfulness and stress management and all that sort of stuff. And uh, one of the ones we have this time out of Israel is a study where they're comparing um, the effectiveness of a mindfulness-based therapy. And this, both of these are in a group setting, so they're going to compare a group setting of people with fibromyalgia doing mindfulness-based therapy versus cognitive behavioral therapy. And they're gonna compare those two groups and see which type of therapy seems to be more effective for people with fibromyalgia. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here that I wanted to highlight. I don't want this video to get too long. I just kind of wanted to give some highlights for people that maybe they don't, they don't want to read or maybe they don't follow me on my website, but they do follow me here on YouTube. So just kind of scrolling through. There's a, um, a Turkish, uh, research study out of Turkey that's looking at um, stigma related to fibromyalgia so that's that's kind of interesting there is um, there's also an acupuncture uh, study so ear acupuncture it's through a um, VA medical center in Ohio and they're gonna be um, trying to teach uh, veterans I think it's 30 persons, they're gonna try to teach these veterans how to um, put, ne put the uh, needles into their ears uh, by themselves at home so that they can uh, basically self-treat with um, that kind of acupuncture. And um, fibromyalgia, uh, veterans with fibromyalgia are a part of that study. Uh, you know what, I think that's gonna be all that I'm gonna try to focus on for now. Cause like I said, I don't want this to be this video to get too long um, but yeah so let me know in the comments 
Um, are any of the studies that I mentioned, are you excited by any of them? Are you hopeful by any, hopeful, uh, feeling hopeful by any of them? And um, definitely feel free to um, click over to the uh, blog post to see the other studies. Like I said, I, there's 17 total. I probably hit on, you know, maybe eight to 10 in this video. So there's other stuff in, in the uh, post that I didn't discuss. And take care, guys. I hope you guys are doing okay. All right, bye-bye.